Hello, I'm Liam Lacey. I'm just about to come to the end of my time as a film critic at the Globe and Mail after 20 years, 36 years in total working for the newspaper. For my final video, I thought I'd like to talk about some of the films that are my pet films. They're not necessarily the greatest, not necessarily the one you'd put on your top 10 list, but they're films that I've repeatedly enjoyed. And if I had to go to a desert island, I would take these three on DVD. My first film is Palm Beach Story. It's by Preston Sturgis, who was a great screwball comic. This is stars Claudette Colbert as a woman who decides to race down to Palm Beach and marry a millionaire, even though she's actually technically married. She gets her husband to divorce her so she can run off and do this. He follows her down to Palm Beach where he has to pretend not to be her husband while she's trying to score a millionaire. It's very kind of rude and funny, surprisingly uh, sexy for the time. And the, the level of banter is just better than people have ever really managed since in movies, as far as I'm concerned. Twice. You made quite an impression. <laughs> the second movie I would take with me would be The Last Waltz by Martin Scorsese. Um, this is a concert film, a celebration of the band's last concert the, with Robbie Robertson and Lee Von Helm and Rick Danko and the rest of it. The reason why I've always loved this film, first of all, it's Scorsese, who's probably my favorite post-70s director uh, for his great sort of electric style. He's always seemed like a very rock and roll director. Uh, so it has this electricity about it. It's also about a certain style of music at a certain time. Many of the people involved in it are Canadians. There was uh, Robbie Robertson himself, the other members of the band, Joni Mitchell is on that performance, Neil Young, and so on. And you get a sense of this point in sort of roots rock, singer-songwriter movement, just coming up toward the end of the 70s. As it was kind of coming to a close. There was, uh, you know, punk was starting to happen, disco was starting to happen. It's just a great uh, film for me to integrate my two interests, which are, you know, Martin Scorsese films and rock and roll. You can sit there in front of the TV with your six string and play along. It's a lot of fun. Elvis, it's a damn impossible way of life. My last film is actually a pretty popular film. It, um, it won the Academy Award in 1960 for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay. It's Billy Wilder's The Apartment. Um, this is a film set just at that point, late 50s, 1960s, that we now associate with the Mad Men era. It stars Jack Lemmon as a clerk in a giant insurance office who has this downtown apartment. What happens is the various executives in the insurance like to use his apartment to conduct their affairs with the various secretaries and elevator girls and whatever that are happening in the thing. One night, the girl hasn't left. She's, done a, she's had a suicide attempt. She's played by Shirley MacLaine as an elevator girl who's been having an affair with an executive played by Fred McMurray. Um, he takes care of her and helps her out. He falls in love with her and then sort of learns to kind of defy his bosses as a result. This is done as a comedy. It's quite sentimental, but with this dark edge to it. Uh, I love the performers. I like uh, Shirley MacLaine a lot. I like uh, Jack Lemmon's one of my favorite actors all time. Uh, are we dressing for dinner? You know, just come as you are. It's just so smart, so funny, and a certain a bit of even a bit of a film noir sensibility to it. That there's something dark and nasty in these corporations and the status achieving and all the rest of it. Congratulations! 